Today's pattern is a fly called Pat's Midge. It's a relatively new pattern that I came up with a couple winters ago, but it's a pattern that now, looking back at it, I'm wondering how I lived without it. The beautiful thing about fly fishing is you never quit learning. Each day on the river is a new experience. And a couple winters ago, when Tony, a good buddy of mine from the shop and I were out fishing, we noticed and we watched carefully. We watched midges hatching and they were crawling out of their shucks right next to our waders. It really punctuated the importance of tying some small midge imitations with those trailing shucks, uh, imitate the stillborns and emerging midges. That's how Pat's midge came about. I'm gonna begin by clamping a Timco 101 into my vise. It's a traditional straight eye dry fly hook and using some eight aught black uni thread and attaching the thread at the midpoint of my hook shank. The tail is comprised from a piece of rust brown zelon. We'll square off the butt ends of the tail and we'll set that into place and then we'll just advance our thread back towards hook bend with symmetrical touching wraps. As we get to the back, we're gonna advance that thread forward once again. We're just trying to cover up any of that exposed zelon we're going to go back over this one more time, back towards hook bend, and then repeat again, advancing that thread back towards the mid point on the hook shank. As a general rule, my tails on my dry flies and even my shucks like this, I tend to keep them about one shank long in length. This is a variation of a pattern that a good buddy of mine, Matt Miles, invented 25 years ago called Matt's Midge. It's been one of my favorite midges over the years, and this is just kind of a souped up variation of that original pattern. We're gonna begin with a piece of white Zelon, and we're gonna secure that into place right at about that two thirds point on the hook shank. And we're gonna make a loop wing out of that Zelon and secure that little bundle into place. Then we'll advance the thread forward right up to the eye, and that's where we'll use the remaining part for the antenna on the adult midge. I'm gonna take a piece of peacock curl. I'm gonna secure that into place for the thorax area. And then a piece of Whiting Farms Grizzly Rooster. I'm gonna secure that into place right in front of the wing. We'll palmer the peacock curl forward. right up to just short of the eye. Take a couple material locking wraps of thread to secure in place. And then we're gonna palmer our grizzly hackle forward three to four turns is usually sufficient. A couple material locking wraps behind the hackle. Trim it off. We'll pull the antenna forward, take two material locking wraps in front and then we're ready for a whip finish. Occasionally you'll get a straggler or two on this hackle. You can clip off any of those fibers. And then the final step is to trim that Zelon off to create that antenna, a very predominant feature that you'll see in your adult midges. With regard to fishing this pattern, typically long leaders, nine to 12 foot. I always prefer some sort of a reach mend or a specialty cast when I'm fishing to selective midge feeders. In other words, I'm gonna reach bend and that's gonna kick the leader around so that the first thing that the fish see is the fly. So the fly is gonna precede the leader and it's a deadly tactic when you're trying to fool selective surface feeders. There you have it, a completed Pat's Midge. I wanna thank everybody for watching the Blue Quill Angler fly tying tutorial. If you have any questions or concerns about today's tying session, by all means, give us a call at the shop at 303 674-4700 or email me at patd at bluequillangler.com. If you want to purchase any of the materials that we used in today's session, follow the links below or go online to our website at bluequillangler.com. I want to thank you for your continued support. I hope our paths cross again soon and I look forward to the next tying session.